Well, I mean, I think everywhere else in society except healthcare, you know, the difference between a cloud-based, you know, the internet and people buying and shrink wrapping and loading onto their servers software apps are is clear. I mean, it's it's the difference between the game of basketball and a little bobblehead basketball player sitting there that actually doesn't appears to be moving, but it's just floating there, not doing anything. You know, a software application is isolated fundamentally by its nature. It's non-dynamic fundamentally by its nature. Healthcare is fundamentally connected, or should be fundamentally connected and fluid, dynamic, changing. We don't know diddly about what we would do to treat patients if we actually had the information that exists in the healthcare supply chain about them because we've never actually had that experience. Some experience with it, Kaiser, by buying everything in the supply chain could actually have an integrated piece of information. The VA, by buying everything. But the Soviet, as an approach to integration, is, works, I mean, theoretically, but a market where information can exchange easily, like in financial services or stocks or anything, is obviously better. And cloud-based services, like Athena and others, uh, make that possible. What we measure ourselves on is not whether we've attained any certification stamp in the corner of our screen, but whether the doctors are actually getting the check. So you look at Meaningful Use, the data that came out today, you have 191,000 doctors even playing the game out of 600,000 who could play, and 23% of those, so what's that, 40,000 doctors winning the game, right? You compare that to Athena, 83% of all doctors won the game. Played and won. percent of Athena Health users got the providers check. have gotten their checks. That's, That's right. amazing. Yeah, well, That's it's actually, you know, kind of wish it was 100. We guaranteed it for 100. But the fact that we could monitor, had to, we're, we're duty bound to monitor the performance of these practices over time and iterate the application, the way it was set up, what settings were turned on, where the race and ethnicity question required yeah. by meaningful use was asked and by yeah. whom until we got the numbers up. Made it easy, you know. We, we we could have been a lot slower and still gotten it. I mean, it was, still, it was a ton of work. It was the first time we ever really got called on bringing a lot of clinical information into the revenue cycle. If all these keynotes are any indication, there's going to be a lot more clinical information in the revenue cycle. The revenue cycle is going to be adjudicated in a lot more places than, you know, 52 payers. Uh, if each one of these guys gets an ACO and some of them are global cap and some of them have a side order of IPA and all these guys get little adjudication engines going, man, is that going to uh, create an increase in dynamism, right? A complexity in the game. And if you're working with a static bobblehead basketball player, you cannot win the game. Sure, yeah, big data is a little easier to manage in the cloud. Right. So here is my 101 for your viewers on the entire history of software as we know it today. Wow, this is it gonna starts be in the Paleolithic Rebootus Maximus era of shrink wrap software, where you pay a million dollars up front and you are given a disk. And then the disk is loaded onto a machine, maybe you, maybe your really bright nephew, maybe a consultant will come and get it all wired up, like those domino flags that good artists can make where you knock one domino and all these amazing things happen. That's software. And compared to nothing, it's awesome. Right, and old software gets added to new code, and it gets uh, what did the what was uh, you remember the uh, the singularity is near Ray right. Kurzweil yeah. code gets yeah. bigger and bigger and bigger and does more things to where you forget that it's a static, isolated, unresponsive to change thing because so many different conditions have been added to the software. Right, that's software. Then you had the kind of um, got so complicated that nobody could use it, and you end up with the ASP era where all the Deloitte's and the PWC's and the EMC's and the do re -Mi's will host it and all these engineering types with TITACs will keep your data backed up and show you how to upload and download and reversion and I don't know what, permissions, right? Mm -hmm. Then finally guys like Benioff say, you know what? All these things are too complicated. Nobody wants 80% of what they have and it's all tons of money up front whether it works or not. I'm just gonna put one version, simple, out there, internet native, use it for free, at the end of three months, I'll start banging your credit card. If you don't like it, turn it off, right? And all of a sudden, a huge breakthrough happened. One, no cost of entry, but two, the maker of the software is logging into and seeing the same instance of the same application that the user of software is using. So Benioff could fire off new releases of Salesforce.com as many times a year as he wants. There's no Salesforce, there's no upgrades, no module to buy. You know, oh, if you want your ANSI 5010 module upgrade, 
No, you can't get the claim out without it. I'm turning it on, it's in there, it's not a choice. If you don't like it, go away, right? And so he arced up the capability curve of customer relationship management so fast that before you know it, nobody wants to buy Siebel anymore, right? The next generation is what we are, is a cloud-based service, where the product is no longer the software, it's the result. So my favorite is, is Amazon, right? Millions of lines of code, we compete with them for developers, right? But actually, the software's free. The only way Bezos makes money is if you buy the thing that you went online to get. Right. So if all of his software is certified and meaningful use, see chit, dog chit, whatever, compliant, and you don't get the book, he doesn't get the money, right? right? That's good, right? And if he has to buy warehouses to store books and own forklifts. Imagine that, a software company owns forklifts, you know, and do deals with the USPS, or build hardware and give it to people at 0% margin, like the Kindles, which we're giving away, right? He's gonna do that if it'll get that outcome of people with a story that they paid for from him. And he said, hey, look at that, I gave him the hardware, now I can squirt him a book and save money on warehouses, right? That's the kind of business model that Athena is. It's the kind of business model that healthcare needs. The government's got to make a little bit more room so that exchange of information can be more easily paid for by people. Right now, it's a lot of laws around anti-kickback where if the receiver wants different information, they can't pay the sender to give them a better message. Sure. They should be able to, and the OIG was very forward thinking with us last year where they gave us permission to charge receivers some of the medical record fee of senders. That's a neat, breakthrough, and we're going to see more and more of that, and as more companies become cloud-based services in healthcare, and you know, the dinosaurs start to, you know, peel over, you know, we'll eat their carcasses, and, 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 and there'll be a whole new generation of smaller, more fleet of foot companies that only rise when their results... Here's a breakthrough. This year, this, this week, we started charging for our medical records. We've broken the fee into two things, both success fees. One, you see patients in the exam room with our EMR, we store the data, et cetera. It's a percentage of collections. If you slow down in the exam room with your EMR, we lose money instantly, right? right? The other, about 40% of the fee is now a care coordination fee, an order fee. It's charged $1 per order that you send, and we will only charge you the do dollar if we follow that order where it belongs, get the care done, get the result back, match it to your order in the chart, and, and, and the result your order in the chart, and file it. If we don't get it back, we won't charge you the order, the, the fee. Right. Well, so we now lose money if stuff gets lost. So and of course in healthcare, care, everybody, every keynote, 80% of everything gets lost right. or done twice. So care coordination is a part of your business model. There's now a mar new right. model. We are at risk for care about. coordination. Sure. And I, you know, I invite everybody else to go at risk if the stuff gets lost. Don't charge the customer. I don't care if your software was certified and worked properly, yeah. and then the guy didn't get what he needed. Well, I've heard developers say, and I believe them, that they could design an electronic health record that's completely certified for meaningful use, yet completely unusable in the right. physician's right. clinic. You can have a Sarbox compliant company run by crooks. Exactly. You know, they do all the check boxes and all the whizzy wigs, and they do all the audits, and anyway, they, you know, spend a thousand dollars on wine right. and so rent a plane for personal key. stuff. And you're, you're, you've actually kind of, in some senses, embedded usability of your software in the clinician's practice into your biz That's business right. model and your revenue right. stream is based on them right. being able to better coordinate care. You got it. And, and, and what I'm seeing is more and more constituencies that want to play. So the first constituency was the receiver of the referral and it's a tiny little thing. It's just, can I have, please, the actual information I need and none of this crap that comes with an HIE. Yes, you can have it, it'll be one dollar, and we'll give you the credit card, the eligibility, the, I don't know what we can give credit card yet, but the eligibility, the insurance detail, how much of their deductibles utilized, what the problem is, what their allergies are, and that's it. And we'll zip it into a little portal that you can download into whatever system you're on. You don't even need to be on Athena, right? Really? Yeah. The doctor gets visibility. Hey, I sent my patient, but they didn't get seen. Or they got seen, but I haven't gotten a consult note back from the doctor. They can see it now. They can see the supply chain for the first time. You know? Now, I think over time, you know, maybe this is the beginning of the end of the idea of prospective clinical trials. Maybe you say, look, if it doesn't hurt you, we're going to turn it on, but then we're going to surveil its use and its impact over time, and if it doesn't make an impact in a year, we're turning off your CPT code.